Hello everyone, Celtic Fairy Tarot back with another pick a card reading. I hope you all are having a lovely day today and we are going to jump right into a message from your soul. What does your soul want you to know? We have pile one. We have pile two. And we have pile three. Take your time, vibe out which pile is calling to you and the timestamps are down below. Can't wait to get into it. Hello, pile one. You have chosen photo number one and you've chosen the rest. Stop, recharge and self care card. The first thing that I'm feeling within your energy pile one is your mind is trying to outrun something. I talk about this all the time. It's definitely redundant here on my page, but we have three aspects of self. We have the mind, we have the soul, and we have the body. Your mind is trying to outrun something while your soul is trying to process something. It feels like there are parts of yourself that are scattered within memories, scattered within timelines, and your, your mind is like, okay, I'm done with this, I'm just going to move on. But your soul and your body need a, a little bit of a breath before they can move on with what's happened here. It feels like, you know, when your friends are running too far ahead of you and you're shorter than the rest of your friends, so you're like, hey, wait. <laughs> I can't keep up. You have to slow down. Your soul is saying to your mind, we need to slow down. Whatever it is, the mind is trying to outrun. Whatever it is, the mind is trying to run away from. The soul is wanting to stop and look at it. The soul is wanting to process. And almost like I'm seeing someone drop their bag and all their things scatter on the ground. And, you know, that person's friend is like, oh, we got to keep moving. I don't even want to look at that stuff. We got to keep moving. And the soul's like, but wait, but wait, I need all this stuff, right? That's what this feels like. It's important to be processing. And I know it's uncomfortable, pile one. I know it's incredibly uncomfortable. But what the soul is saying is inevitably, this is going to catch up to us. Inevitably, we're going to need the things that we dropped and left behind. We're going to need these things. And I'd rather pick them up now than have to try to scour and find them later, is what your soul is saying. I know it's complicated. I know it's emotionally painful to stop and pick up these aspects of self or stop and process what has happened here. But your soul is saying better to do it now than to try to come back and find these aspects of self later. We have vivid memories. And while that may be incredibly uncomfortable, it is helpful in the processing process. I highly suggest therapy here and going and talking to somebody, not going through this alone. It's important to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Otherwise, it gets lost in the body somewhere. It gets lost in the mind somewhere. You know, especially the mind has a very, um, <laughs> how do I say this? A very gifted ability to ignore things. <laughs> or to shove them way down, or to not think about them again. But the body inevitably pushes those memories up. So outrunning these memories, your soul is saying, is it's not going to help. We can run. We can run as fast as we can. But ultimately, that memory is going to still surface. That pain and those emotions are still going to want to be purged by the physical being. And your soul is like, why not now? Why not now? Journal, pile one. Again, I know it's complicated. I know it's painful to relive these memories. I know it's hard on the physical being to purge these things. If you've ever been sick, you understand this. When your body is trying to fight an illness, it's uncomfortable. Especially if it's a viral illness, you can't breathe through your nose. You remember all the good times where you could breathe through your nose, you get no sleep, maybe there's a fever, 
maybe there's sweating, maybe there's fatigue. It's definitely uncomfortable when your body is purging things. But why not now? Why wait is what your, your soul is saying. I'm hearing the phrase, this too shall pass. A lot of you are afraid to confront this. A lot of you are afraid to stop running, turn around and face it because of the uncomfortable aspect of it, because it feels painful. It feels horrific. It feels horrendous. And your soul is saying, I know, I know. And I know too, pile one. But turning around and facing this, getting those aspects of self back is going to be so beneficial for you in the future. You aren't going to be weighed down, anchored down by things you cannot see. A lot of times when we repress emotions, when we repress things, when we repress memories, they still anchor us down. They just get lost in there. And then you're like, hmm, I wonder why I do this. Hmm, I wonder why I'm feeling like this. It's because something's triggered you, pile one, but you can't remember why. Because it's repressed in there. It's buried deep, deep, deep down. Your soul is saying, why bury it when we can go through it now, when we can get rid of it now? It's uncomfortable, yes, but we can do it, and this too shall pass. Okay? All right, pile one, I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on this journey, and until next time, Hello, Pile 2. You have chosen photo number two, and you've also chosen the crone, the fairy godmother, wisdom, future, and truth. And the energy here is a little bit similar to Pile 1, so if you were drawn to Pile 1, there could be a message there for you as well. But if you were not, that is not a sign to go watch it. I want to talk about horses for a second, Pile 2. You can't hide from a horse. A horse can read your energy. It can smell your fear. It can smell your emotional being. A horse always knows the truth about you. And this card here, the crone, the fairy godmother, it talks about the fairy godmother coming in and delivering a truth, even if it's hard for us to hear. What I'm feeling is that your, your mind is trying to put on some kind of rose-colored glasses in terms of a situation and your soul is wanting the truth of it. Your soul is wanting to not only acknowledge the truth of whatever this is, but get your mind to acknowledge the truth of whatever this is. It's redundant on my page. I talk about it often. We are three different sentient beings combined together in one. We have our soul, we have our mind, and we have our body right? And sometimes, especially when we are out of balance, some aspects of ourselves cannot be cooperating with or working with another aspect of self. And in this case, pile two, what I'm feeling is a separation between the soul and the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is trying to stay in a situation that may not be the healthiest for your soul and your body and your mind, but it's in your comfort zone. It's well within your comfort zone. So your mind is trying to convince the rest of you that everything is okay, everything is fine, but you're seeing the symptoms of it within your physical body, anxiety, insomnia, a lack of eating, a lack of you know um, joy and happiness in life. There's something your mind is trying to delude you with that whatever this could be, uh, a habit this could be an individual this could be a lifestyle this could be a career whatever this is for you it's hindering your growth and your soul is trying to acknowledge this your soul is trying to bring this forward to your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind is absolutely not having it so it's almost like you're triggering yourself quite often your soul could be trying to talk to you in your dream life and you're having dreams that are really triggering your subconscious mind yeah. You could get, you know, random glimpses of this situation for what it truly is, the truth of the situation, and then you notice the mind will come in and dilute it directly after. Well, I see that, but it's okay. I see that, but it will change. I see that, but I don't want to see that is the energy here. And your soul is like, I want 
to keep moving forward. I want to keep uh, growing. I want to keep evolving. I want to keep living life. I want to feel joy again. This, whatever this is, it robs you of true happiness and true joy. It may bring you comfort. It may bring you comfort. It may bring you joy for a split second, but it's robbing you of that stable happiness. Mm. But it's what you know. I'm hearing it's what you know. I get it. It's what you know. But this is angering you in some way. Your, your soul is not enjoying it anymore is what I'm hearing. And that is the biggest message here. Your soul is not enjoying it. And no matter how much your subconscious mind, your mind tries to delude your soul into believing that this is good for you or this is healthy for you or this is where you want to be, your soul is, is pushing back. It's repelling. And your physical body is as well. I'm, I'm feeling nausea. I'm, I'm sensing a lot of upset within the physical body. I feel like for a lot of you, this could be uh, something that gets you to self-sabotage often, like to sabotage yourself. You'll notice whatever this is, it's in your life, but it may bring you instant gratification for a moment. Whatever this is keeps you from connecting to the outside world. It keeps you from connecting to other people in a healthy way. And your soul wants to acknowledge this. I'm tired of lying to ourselves is what I'm hearing. I'm tired of deluding ourselves. I'm tired of feeling like this is all we can have. I'm tired of feeling like this is all life will ever be. I want more. I want more than this. I want more than this instant gratification. I want stable gratification. I want stable happiness. Yeah. I want happiness that comes from within, that I create. I want a mindset that is healthy and can find joy in even the darkest of places. But whatever this is, giving you this instant gratification, keeping you stuck within your comfort zone, it's anchoring you. It's holding you back. And your soul is saying, please, please, please hear me. Yeah. All right, pile two, I'm going to leave this here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey. And until next time, bye. Hello, pile three. You have chosen photo number three and the Morrigan, power, courage, and strength. And the first thing that I'm seeing is imagine uh, there is this like uh, veil. And the veil is your emotional being. I'm seeing you step out of that. And this is my pile of very spiritually gifted individuals. And you could notice, pile three, that you are not as connected to spirit as you once were. And this is because you have stepped out of that emotional being. You do not allow yourself to embody and feel the emotions that arise within you because there is shame attached to them. And we see this a lot with children who were shamed or children who were punished for having these profound emotions, for having and embodying these profound emotions. We also see this from individuals who have undergone abusive relationships, specifically when it comes to gaslighting and reactive abuse. You question your emotions rather than allow them to flow through you. You analyze your emotions rather than allow them to flow through you. You push away or repress these emotions rather than allow them to flow through you. I'm hearing your soul say, it's time to make friends with your anger. It's time to make friends with your anger. Imagine you take a wolf and you put this wolf in a cage and you don't feed it. You don't acknowledge it. Occasionally you visit it because... You can hear it howling. You can hear it growling. So occasionally you come over and you look at it, but you don't feed it. You don't acknowledge it. You don't allow it to be the wolf that it is. That wolf is going to get angrier and angrier and angrier and more resentful and more resentful and more resentful. So if you're wondering why your anger is so fierce, if you're wondering why when you know you can snap 
at any given moment, even on the smallest of occasions. It's because these emotions are not allowed to be felt when they arise. They are repressed. They are building and building and building until you cannot hold them in anymore, until it almost forms a life of its own. And so getting back in touch with your emotional being, allowing those emotions to surface when they need to, rather than when you're ready for them to, is really key here. It's important. Some people may say, well, you should hold all your emotions in until you get home and then release them. Why? Why is one person's perspective of how you should live within your emotional being, why is it overpowering yours? Allowing other people to dictate how you exist and how you flow through your emotional being is only to your detriment, pile three. You have to listen to your own body, you have to listen to your own mind, and you have to listen to your own soul. What is best for us right now? What is best for us in this moment, not what is most convenient for everybody else? Some people, if they have it their way, they'll never come across an angry person ever. Is that normal? Is that earth? <laughs> is that life? No. That is the coddled perception of a stranger, okay? That is the coddled perception of someone else. And the coddled perception of someone else does not dictate how you live your life, does not dictate how you allow your energy to flow. There is nothing shameful about anger. There is nothing shameful about sadness. There is nothing shameful about expressing the emotions that need to be expressed because we don't want them getting trapped and lost within the physical being. That comes with a whole plethora of other problems, right? You knew how to flow, pile three. In childhood, you knew how to let those emotions flow as they needed to, like a hurricane comes and goes. But lately, it's been more difficult. You've been stepped outside of your emotional being. You're afraid to step back into that emotional being. You're afraid to lose control. And maybe there's a part of you, pile three, that really needs to immerse yourself in some kind of therapy to allow it all to come out to allow it all to come out. This could be somatic healing. This could be Reiki. This could be traditional therapy, whichever is best for you, pile three. But in order to allow it to flow once again, the blockage has to be removed. The dam has to break. And I know that sounds scary, and I know that sounds intimidating, especially with what's stored up in there. But the only way to start this, pile three, is to start this. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave that here, pile three. I wish you the best of luck on this journey. And until next time. <laughs>